Howdy. We're going to pick up where we left off, and now we're going to start talking about uh, different kinds of structural descriptors that we use to describe liquid crystals. Uh, and basically, this is a term that allows us to answer the question, how oriented are liquid crystal messages? So we described uh, liquid crystals before, and this is an example um, uh, of, a, of a nomadic liquid crystal where we have um, these mesogens and they're aligned in a particular direction. But we didn't talk about how we define how aligned they are. Um, and this means that we're going to start introducing um, terms that we uh, allow, uh, allow us to describe and answer that question. Um, and these are called order parameters. And so an order parameter is basically um, a scalar, a number that allows us to answer that question. We can think about some extreme cases, right? So if I think about the top case versus the bottom case, um, if you just qualitatively look at the pictures, you can see in the bottom case that the, the messages tend to be a little bit more aligned. And so if I have to plot a histogram over here, um, that's what this is showing, it's, it's showing what is the probability of finding um, a molecule uh, at some angle off of this average angle. And, and so we're going to introduce a couple terms. This thing uh, that is pointing in the average direction, we're going to call the director. So the director is a vector that's pointing in the average direction. So the direction that is sort of combined average that all these other individual um, individual messages are pointing. And we see that for any individual molecule, the vector that's along the long axis of that molecule does not have to be pointing exactly in the same direction as the director. And so there's some offset angle, uh, an angle theta, that describes that angle between a particular messagen, let's say this one up here, uh, we can label him, let's call him Bob, um, and the average direction. Uh, and so that angle is what I'm showing here. Um, and so, you know, maybe this is in degrees. Uh, and so uh, most of the, the, the most common direction for individual messages to be pointing is along the director. But there are some that are pointing, you know, uh, one degree off. And there, there are a few that are two degrees off. And you know, by the time we get to about three degrees, it's, it's pretty quickly decayed away. Uh, and the same thing pointing in the opposite direction. So so the, the width of this probability curve is basically a measure of how strongly aligned are the individual messages in this liquid crystal. How close is the average message to pointing in the same direction as that director? Um, and if I think about the case on the top, let's call that case A, there's a little bit more variability than I'm showing in that case B. And so what that means is that this, this histogram, this distribution, has a much narrower curve. The, the full width half max is much smaller. And so, you know, whereas before I could say, well, 90% of these molecules are within plus or minus two degrees of this average direction. Um, in this case, down here, maybe I could say 90% of those molecules are within plus or minus half a degree uh, of that direction. And so again, the orientational order parameter is a number that's supposed to answer that question. It's supposed to tell us how ordered is that system. Um, so there are a few rules that order parameters generally follow. So usually we're looking for something that's a scalar. Um, so order parameters are usually scalars and, and they're usually things that can vary continuously um, from some upper, upper and lower bound. And because we're, we're defining the order parameter, it's nice to give it an arbitrary upper bounds. Let's, let's say it doesn't go between you know, 1.3 and 7.9, that'd be crazy. Let's define a, a parameter that varies continuously and let's say it goes maybe between zero and one. And so in that case, zero is uh, totally disordered. So the value of the order parameter is zero, that means there is no order, or one is completely ordered. And so that means there would be no degrees of freedom um, in the system uh, in, in that particular um, aspect of the system. So again, it, it gives a simple way to define quantitatively how ordered is a material. And this is important because again, we would like to be able to say, you know, if, I, if I'm looking for a liquid crystal material, maybe I want something that aligns perfectly in one direction under some conditions, and then it's totally random. And so 
this really allows you to quantify how good of a job does it doing achieving those goals. So the specific definitions, they can be a little bit arbitrary. Basically, we're looking for a mathematical function that, that fits these previous, um, uh, these previous definitions. Um, and so again, if I think about a, a descriptor, uh, an order parameter that's describing these liquid crystal structural or uh, liquid crystal systems. Um, you know, a liquid crystal might be relatively ordered. Something with a, a order parameter of zero, there would be, you know, no uh, rotational or orientational order. So in this case, those mesogens are free to spin freely, and so we wouldn't call that a liquid crystal anymore. That would be a liquid. Um, similarly. I might have a system that has complete order. All of those messages are pointing exactly in the same direction. Um, and that would be a, a very special case. And, and with liquid crystals, we never quite get to that point. You know, usually we're not at this totally ordered case. We're somewhere below there. We're somewhere like this, um, this picture I'm showing to the left. Um, another really important thing is that the order parameter or a specific order parameter can use can be used to describe just one aspect of the structure. So I could have one order parameter that's talking about rotational or, or, or directional order, and I could have a different order parameter that's talking about translational order. And so we'll give example of both of those. And so we're seeking, again, we're seeking some order parameter that goes between zero and one to describe this system. Um, and this is really just repeating what I already said, but order parameter uh, generally describes how well a material meets some description of perfect order. Um, so a, a thing that's commonly used to describe this uh, rotational order uh, is the expression that I'm showing here. And we need to talk about this a little bit. What do these different terms mean? So um, in the top, it's given in terms of a dot product of two vectors. Um, and vector n is that average direction, and that is exactly what we called the director before. So it's a vector of a unit length that's pointing um, in the average direction of the collective whole. Um, so if I, if I statistically, again, I plotted a distribution of the direction they're all pointing, um, the, the director, or this n hat vector, uh, is going to be pointing in uh, this direction, the direction that is uh, the average of the distribution. Uh, and P is the vector that's going along the direction of one particular mesogen. Um, and so what we're doing is we're looking at an expectation value uh, of this dot product of vectors. Um, and because we've defined, you know, because we can kind of define these vectors a little bit, we can say each of them are unit lengths, and that means that the dot product between the two is just the cosine of the angle between the two. And so what I'm looking for is we're looking for, again, the average of the square, uh, the, yes, the average of the cosine squared theta, uh, where theta is this um, direction between one particular mesogen and that average direction. So let's kind of put some real numbers in here. Let's say that um, the system is totally aligned. So if the system is totally aligned, then um, the average angle, uh, this theta angle, uh, is going to be zero. Um, and the cosine squared of, of zero is going to be one. Um, so in a perfectly aligned system, this term is one. And so I have three times one minus one. So the expression within the parentheses is given by two, two over two. And so in a perfectly ordered system, our order parameter reduces to one. Um, as that angle gets larger, so as the average angle um, opens up, there's more variation. Um, this cosine squared theta term will, will be reduced and it'll be less than one. Uh, and if this is less than one, then the overall uh, order parameter term uh, is gonna be also less than one. Um, so this is exactly what we're looking for. It's a, it's, a, it's a scalar. It gives us a quantitative measure of the average direction. Um, we can calculate it in terms of um, basically the, the, 
the distribution of these angles uh, of all of the messages in the systems. Uh, and, and it gives us a, a value between one for perfectly ordered system and something lower than that as I increase the disorder. Um, and so it's important to understand that these order parameters uh, depend on the, the thermodynamic state of the system. And so as I increase the temperature, that order parameter uh, is going to start to decrease. And it'll continue to decrease until I have some critical transition temperature. And, and what happens above that? Again, if I'm thinking about a pneumatic crystal, and if I get to a high enough temperature, at a higher temperature, I'm not a liquid crystal anymore. I'm just a liquid. Um, and so at high enough temperature, the disorder has increased to an extent that we transition from this liquid crystal state to a pure liquid state. And so this is a critical temperature uh, of that transition. Um, it, the liquid crystal itself could take some range of values. Um, and as temperature decreases, it's going to get more ordered. But you see, we, we never really get to a fully ordered um, system. So this is a directional or an orientational order parameter. Um, and so again, it's, it's related to the dot product of the vectors or the angle uh, between the average um, angle uh, between uh, individual messages in the system and that, that quantity that we've defined as the director. So smectic crystals, if you recall, smectic crystals were the ones that tend to, um, they, they are aligned, but they also are positionally um, oriented into um, different layers. And so this picture on the top is showing uh, something where, you know, if, if you picture that each of these dots is the centroid of a molecule, I tend to have a lot more molecules focused within uh, this layer, and then there tends to be a region where the center is not located. And then another uh, layer, and then a, another layer where molecules are not uh, located. Um, so we use a, a different value, but this is, this is a, um, a positional order parameter, um, and oftentimes it's called sigma SM, where SM is referring to smectic crystals. And again, it's, a, it's an expectation value of the cosine of two pi z over a. And a is this periodicity. So this length from the center of one layer to another, the re average repeat distance is given by a. Um, and so how do we define this expectation value? Well, it's just given by the term that I'm expressing below. So it's the integral from, uh, so let, let's say we call uh, this position zero. Uh, it's the integral from minus a over 2 to a over 2 of cosine 2 pi z over a times this p of z term. And p of z here is just a probability distribution. What is the, what is the probability of finding um, a centroid of a molecule at a position point along this axis z? Um, and it's that expression over, again, the integral uh, from minus a over 2 to a over 2 of this p over z term as well. So what does this look like? Well, let's think about, first of all, what it might look like in a, uh, a disordered system. And in a disordered system, this probability distribution is just flat. It's, it's uh, I'm, I'm equally likely to find a molecule at this point as I am at this point, as I am at this point, as I am at this point. Um, and so that probability distribution as a function of uh, z is, is just a number. So it's a scalar. So if I take the integral of cosine 2 pi z over a times a scalar over the integral of that same scalar, well, these terms are both going to drop out. And I'm just left with the integral of the minus a over 2 to a over 2 of this cosine term. Uh, and we know that the integral of a sine or cosine term um, uh, across one period is going to equal zero. So if I have a uniform distribution, this order parameter goes to zero. Now, if I instead say probability function, uh, probability uh, of finding a, a, a molecule on a position as a function of z is a trigonomet trigonometric term. So let's say the probability matches this cosine two pi z over a. Well, in that case, I take the integral of cosine squared over the integral of the cosine. Um, and I'm not going to do the math here, but I want you to, you know, um, you, can, you can work through this at home. 
Um, but you should find that if I put in exactly the same term, exactly 2 pi z over a, um, then the value of this sigma uh, sm should come out to, to equal 1. Um, so that would be something where it is uh, sort of very uh, positionally ordered. Um, and so we go from the disordered state, which I'm showing in the bottom, uh, to the ordered state, which I'm showing in the top. Um, and so just as before, the, the, um, the value of this order parameter is going to change with the temperature. And so I can have some uh, different critical transition temperatures here and here. Um, and both of these represent transitions from one state to another. So at this lower temperature, I might be in a smectic state. And then as I increase temperature, I could transition from that to a pneumatic liquid crystal. And then if I increase temperature anymore, I could go again all the way to a fully liquid state. Um, and again, when I go from smectic to pneumatic, the value of this order parameter goes to zero because no longer am I positionally ordered. The, the mesogens aren't occupying layers anymore. They're relatively random along their director direction. Um, and then up at a higher temperature, they have lost their orientational uh, order. And so they're just simply a liquid again. So I'm gonna give one more video that's uh, focused on a very practical application of these things. Um, but again, this uh, was focused on you know, how we define order parameters and how we use them to quantitatively define the state of the system.